What up, what up, what up? It's Michelle Eldridge. Welcome to another video. I am so, so excited to be here. I've been waiting to do this all day, trying to find a crack in the day. So I have a crack. It's either this or like a cat nap. And I can't afford a cat nap. So here we are. So I hope that's not a screenshot. That was hideous. Hello, Andrea. Hi. So as you hop on, say, hey, let me know what you're doing today. I hope you're having an amazing Tuesday. I hope that's what day it is. Uh, my days like mesh together and do fun things. Um, but uh, first of all, thank you for hopping on. I really, really appreciate it. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a good one. Hey, Kayla, Chelsea, throwing some waves. Hopefully the comments, Jan, TJ, hey. Hopefully the comments work. Okay, this time. So I look ridiculous. Okay, I just took a shower, I got a jacket on, like I live in this thing, it's way too big for me, whatever. But, I have been listening to a new book um, on Audible, and if you've been following me for a long time, hey Amanda, um, then you know that I am the, like, personal development, all that kind of thing, queen. Hey Vicky, Danica, hello. Danica's a rock star, in case y'all didn't know. Um, but I have literally been, like, just listening to this the first time today. And I'll tell you what it is in a few minutes. But the, as you see, the title of this video is, you could be an addict and not even realize it. Like, you don't even know. And when you hear that, you're like, uh, lady... Yeah, no, I know I'm not an addict because I don't do this or I don't do that. And most people attribute, like, when they think of the word addict, they think of drugs or they think of alcohol. And those things, obviously, you can get addicted to. Clearly, I've done it, right? But that's not the only things. You can get addicted to so many things. Oh, you just got home from work? Well, I hope you're chilling at this point. But it doesn't have to just be that and we're just going to talk about it and you don't have to throughout this you don't have to admit yeah that's me you don't have to say oh my god like you don't have to do that if you're willing and you're and you're you feel the urge to share then that's awesome like if you're able to comment that that resonates with you it feels like something you do fine but you definitely aren't obligated because it's sometimes it's really hard um, to say that some of these things are actually something that happens for you because they're tough. It's tough. And so you're going to see why in a second. Um, again, everybody that's hopping on, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. You'll be seeing a lot of me the next two weeks. Hello. Uh, like I need something else to add to my big long list or whatever. But anyway, whatever. So first of all, Let's just, let's just first, since that was the context that it was talked about um, in the book that I'm listening to, we'll talk about this first. So let's talk about like work, like what you do for work um, in the context of are you, are you bringing your work home? Are you saying yes to every single project at work or everything somebody asked you? Are you filling in every single time somebody asked you, even when it's not actually your to-do list? Like... Your boss gives you a list of stuff to do at work. Maybe you're taking it home or uh, maybe it's not on your list that he gave you or she gave you, but somebody else asked you to do it. It's not in your purview. It's not your jurisdiction, but you say yes and you do it anyway. Like you just have this hard time saying no um, when people ask you to do things. So then you have this big long list that you're always doing always constantly doing you're thinking about it at home you're you're laying in bed you can't sleep because you're thinking about it or when you wake up the first thing after a few minutes you're thinking about your to-do list what you're going to do how much you got to do you're overwhelmed you're all these things that could be one of them <laughs> okay that could be one of them and we're going to talk about each one that i mentioned um but i want to mention each one first okay so that could be one of them Okay, and then another one could be, say you're like me, and for instance, you work from home or from your phone or social media has something to do with mm -hmm. your work, or even if it doesn't have something to do with your work, the first thing you do when you open your eyes, you don't do nothing but grab your phone. 
Start looking at it. Get on social media. Bam, 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 bam. As soon as your eyes open, you're grabbing your phone. You go from turn your alarm clock off, plugging your coffee pot in, putting your phone in your face. And, and then throughout the day, you're checking it. You're scrolling. You're in the scroll hole. Whether you're getting anything done or not, say, say if you do what I do, even if you don't, you're in this scroll hole and you're scrolling, you're comparing yourself, but you're always checking your phone. You don't eat without your phone. You don't um, live without your phone. Like your phone is constantly in your hand or really close. You're checking it, even if you're not on it. Any little ding, you're going to see what that ding is. All these things, like all day from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, your phone is near you and it's and even at work, you check your phone. Even when you're not supposed to, you check your phone. Uh, when you're with your spouse, you're checking your phone. When you're, you know, all these things, you're checking your phone. You're, you're on your phone. You're looking, you're doing, you're whatever. And it's not necessarily work, right? Or it could be. Or it could be. But if it's all day, probably not. Right. Okay. So there's another one. Again, we're going to talk about all these and what to do about them. You don't have to admit that they're you unless you want to. Feel free to share this um, with your followers. Maybe um, we can help some of them um, together. So, or you may be someone who gets up, eats before lunch, eats again at lunch, eats again after lunch. If you not long later, you're having a snack, another snack. It's supper, after supper, snack, bedtime snack, whatever. But it's all day constantly eating, all day. Something, whether it's a sucker, candy, a sandwich, chips, whatever it is. Or it could be the same thing with caffeine. Papa, as soon as you wake up, Mountain Dew, Coke, whatever it is that you drink, right? Um, it could be coffee all day long. As soon as you wake up, bam, one for right now, another cup in an hour, another cup a couple hours later, and so on and so forth. But this is little increments all day long, all day long, all day long. And when we, and you know, right, we know, number one, of all the things I've said so far, um, doing any of that isn't good for us all day long. Just not, okay? So, another one. Shopping. Let's talk about shopping. You see stuff at the store. You don't need it. You don't even really want it, but you buy it. You see something, um, a Facebook ad, and bam, you buy it. Um, just random things, especially when you're bored or you don't have something to do. Um, you shop and you buy things that you don't necessarily need or you buy excessively and things that you may need later um, and you just do this. You don't, you don't think, you know you don't necessarily need that. Like I used to do this with phone cases. I would have a hundred phone cases for no reason. I had no need for a hundred phone cases, okay? Like, I, if that was just my vice, okay, do, 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 I'm bored, let's just, do, do, do. And that's what happens. So all of these things, do, 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 do. So I've talked about right now, between work, whether it's working on your phone or a job, whatever, not saying no, taking on tasks that you don't necessarily have to do, bringing your work home with you when you're supposed to be chilling, your phone or your work, your laptop, your whatever's in your face, and then your phone all day long, constantly eating all day long, constantly shopping all day long, constantly your choice of caffeine, soda, whatever, all day long. Like those things are an escape. That's what they are. And that's what, so there was a person, I'm not going to say their name. They know who they are. But they were doing this program, and it was like a coaching thing, and she found that it didn't serve her anymore, and she wanted to leave the community. She'd been thinking about it for a while, but she hadn't done it up until today, and she'd done it, and she was really sad, just really bummed, like she just lost her best friend, and it's because it's an escape from reality. Eating the food all the time, I've been here too, when I first stopped shooting up, like, obviously, if you're new here, 
I used to be an IV drug user. Welcome. My name is Michelle. <laughs> and um, so I would trade it in for food. So I would just stuff my face all day long. I mean, I would legit. That was my constant. Chum, chum, chum. Or, and then I got past that point <laughs> and then got to phone cases and I would constantly buy and buy and buy crap that I didn't need. Even when I knew I needed the money, I would spend it. I would be broke and buying a phone case for the love of God, okay? Like, it's, a res it's an escape from reality. That's what being on your phone all day is, right? All day long, checking that. Did did somebody did somebody like my picture? Who was it? Check five minutes later. Oh, two more people like my photo. Oh my gosh, it's a validation. It's it's an escape from reality to get a false sense of validation from someone outside of yourself. It's it's an addiction. That it's exact. It's it's what it is. When you work to keep your mind on something else. To, to, to not actually have to be in the moment, to, to be anywhere but in the moment that you're in, inside your own body, in your own head. When you stay busy or do something, no matter what it is, in most cases, when it's a lot like either of those things I just mentioned a few minutes ago, it's not healthy. But what you actually want and need, every human does, is connection true real connection connection with another human but before you can actually receive that connection a genuine connection from another human you have to be in the moment you have to open yourself up and you have to realize the pattern you have to realize the pattern that you have if you have one of whatever it is. It doesn't have to be just those I mentioned. It could be a million things, okay? It could be a million different things. There's so many different kind of things you can get addicted to, okay? But when we, when we realize what our patterns are, what our habits are, what we are addicted to, in fact, what we are addicted to, we can change it. But we have to become aware of it before we can change it. So, what you want to ask yourself is what is that thing that you're overindulging in, no matter what it is, is it, what's, what, what loses, what is losing, what is lacking because of it? Are you hurting your body? Are you, are you har causing harm to your own bar body in the long run, uh, consuming so much soda and whatever chemicals, all these things? Are you um, working too much that you could have a heart attack by like 35? Are you, you know, just being stressed to that level just to stay busy and not focus on the moment? You know what I'm saying? Are you on social media or working or whatever so much that you're not connecting with your family? You're not, you know, you're letting your marriage go or your, your friends or your family, whatever. And, and, and then using it as an excuse, well... Um, you know, well, I've got a project to do. I, I can't, I can't go out tonight. I gotta work. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? It's easy to be like, okay, hey, here's my defense. But in reality, it's something inside. And it's when it's in that way that I mentioned at the beginning, you may need to watch this from the beginning if you're just hopping on. But it's really, it's, I don't feel worthy of connection. I don't, feel like um like maybe if it's with your spouse I don't feel sexy enough I don't feel attractive so I don't want it's not that I'm actually too tired or I'm too busy I don't want to be intimate because I feel this way inside but instead of actually feeling that we say or we act you know another way to defend our addiction and our escape from feeling that way I hope this makes sense so when you think about, okay, hey, what do I do uh -huh. on a daily basis? And if any of those things sound like you, then you need to change your habit. For instance, if it's your phone, get an old-fashioned alarm clock. They still make them. Okay, I see them at Walmart. You can order it online. Unless your problem is shopping, then somebody probably needs to go get you a clock from the store. Okay, 
But if your problem's like the phone, get a get an old-fashioned alarm clock. This was an example in the book. It was really good. Um, and just put it in your room. Put your phone downstairs. Turn your phone off. It's not to be on until it's time to work. Or if you don't work from your phone and you just use it for, you know, to connect with people and talk to your friends and keep up with people's lives, then you need designated times that you turn it on. And that you, not that you turn it on, but that you get on it for that reason. Because if you don't, even eating, if that means you've got to have somebody lock up your refrigerator or your snacks or somebody else do the grocery shopping for you and you only get crap that you have to cook, I've done it. I've done it because I hate to cook, but I'll eat snacks all day long. I legit have done it and it's really hard and it's hard at first to do any of these things, any of these things. I'm telling you, put a limit on your credit card if you're, or your debit card if you have, um, like, if shopping's your problem. If, obviously, if drugs or alcohol is your problem, then you've got to get away from it. Change your person, people, places, and things if you're ready for that change. And I feel like, obviously, ultimately, it takes being ready for the change, being aware of it, and realizing what kind of pains it's actually causing us versus what it's helping us escape from because if we deal with the real problem which is in here and it goes way back y'all it goes so far back the example in the book the the girl that was a workaholic her dad to get his affection as a kid she would clean the house and she would do chores and she would be the good girl so he'd be like good job you know and so her whole life she worked hard to get validation and feel worthy and in reality, if she wasn't working, she didn't feel worthy. So she stayed with it. Stayed working all the time. Doing way too many things. And not having any time for her. And she didn't like herself when she was not working. Because she felt that's what made her valid. And worthy. But it's a pattern that she'd been doing since she was a kid. And she didn't even realize it. Because she wanted that connection. That I was just talking about a few minutes ago. With her dad. And then with humans, as she's got older, it's just been a pattern. And unless you can can dig in yourself and find what that pattern is for you, if any of these things, you know, you feel like any of these things could be you, then dig deep and find out, you know, what is it? Why am I doing this? What is it about me that I am feeling like I'm unworthy for? Why, why do I feel this way? What happened... When did this change? When's the first time I can remember it happening or me doing this? When's the first time I retreated to my phone after an argument or to avoid one? Like, when's the first time that I start shopping and, or eating instead of, you know, getting in my head and, you know, trying to actually have a discussion about how I feel? When was the first time? Like, whatever, whether it was fourth grade, if it was when you were a teenager, whatever. But you got to find that. And once you find it, you can fix it. And when you fix it, and you can actually have you time and get to know this person that you are instead of not having a clue who you are and trying to cover it with all this crap and just escape from everything, that's when beautiful things will begin to happen for you. Because the validation and the connection and the love that you crave is on the other side of accepting you. The real, raw you. The you that doesn't have to eat all the time. The you that doesn't have to be on your phone all the time. The you that doesn't have to work all the time. The you that doesn't have to shop all the time. The you that is just you. Because that you is enough. You are worthy just as you. And you have to come to that conclusion. So think about the pattern. Change those habits. When you know, you know, you know. That you're fixing to do that thing that you know you shouldn't do. Whether it's pick up the phone, go grab another bite of food or whatever it is. Don't. Go outside and take a walk. Go put headphones in, listen to music. Five minutes, done. Just change your state. Stand up, do jumping jacks, do something else. And then go about your day. Right? Even if that means you need to schedule time that is off limits... For me, that's what I had to do. I have to make certain times where I'm off limits to anything that's to do with my phone. 
I have to. Otherwise, I would never stop because I enjoy it. And I'm, I'm lucky in that. I'm very blessed and very grateful that it doesn't feel like work to me. But I would never stop if I didn't make myself. Never. Truly. So, and I'm still working on that. It's a work in progress, okay? But I just wanted to share that with you because it was, a, it was just like this realization that most people aren't even aware. They've been doing something their whole lives and don't even recognize it. And I thought, wow, I've got to share that. And since today, yeah, you don't know what you don't know. Exactly, Tara. So, what, so today, since it was the first day of the 14-day challenge, y'all know I do these every single time, uh, quarterly. Um, you'll be seeing a lot of me. And I appreciate you so, so much for hopping on. I do want to say this, and it has absolutely nothing to do with addiction. Um, just FYI. Um, and I will tell you the name of the book, just one second. Uh, but if you are somebody who, and like I said, this has nothing to do with this topic. But if you or you know somebody who's looking to make extra money through the holidays for Christmas for your kids, I want to help you. And see if what I'm doing is a fit for you from home. Um, because I can, number one. And I know I've talked to, I don't know how many women in the last two days. Who are like, I don't know how we're going to do Christmas. And so, I just want to bring that up. And tell you I'm here to talk about it if you want. Okay? It's not like no pressure kind of thing. So, now, again. The book that I've been listening to is the brand new book by Mel Robbins. I think it's only on audio, like Audible. Um, that's where I got it. Mel Robbins, I think it's called Work It Out. Um, it comes with a PDF. And you can, I, I screenshot it. I'm going to write all the answers on paper. But it's a workbook that will work. Hey, Mindy. That it, you can work through all that stuff. If you have one or all of these things, it'll walk you through the journey of changing mm -hmm. it and getting to you and and just having that that openness to connection um, and with yourself. So um, if you want it, go to Audible, check it out. It's there. Um, all you need is an Amazon account. It's the same thing. Um, and you don't. Your first book is free. So if you've never been on Audible, never got a book. You could get it for free. You're welcome. So thank you guys so, so much for hopping on. Again, if you feel like your followers or somebody may benefit from this, feel free to share it with them. And I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye.